Metric is a good system and it has its place, but its globalization displaces older systems that can be more useful for certain types of work. And so I just want to encourage folks to be cautious when they hear the fad metric now. What do you think about that? Why? I hear the whole world is in metric, but I've never once sat down and done a job where I was like, you know, I wish there was a better, different way to measure it. Usually I just ignore it until it showed up in our own local news. So it struck too close to home. The title of an article I read is Metric Now. And at some point in the article, it reads 12 inches in a foot. What sense does that make? And I realize there's this huge disconnect between what people think they know about the imperial standard system and what the tradesmen know. And I haven't seen folks put it into words. So let me explain. There are 12 inches in a foot because 12 has more factors than 10. The imperial standard system is optimally divisible. And so what that means is we can divide 12 more evenly, more times than we can 10. 10 is divisible by one and 10 and two and five, four total. But all numbers are divisible by one in themselves. So we'll just look at two and five. So it's divisible by two numbers. 12, on the other hand, is divisible by twice as many numbers. Not only two, but also three, four, and six. And 16 is similar. I'm, I'm gonna read my notes because otherwise <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna have time for this video. We see 16 a lot also in the standard imperial system because it's also divisible by more than two numbers like 10 is. Uh, 16 is divisible, of course, by two, four, and eight. And keep in mind, this is by design. The imperial system, I like to say, is a system of halves whereas the metric system is a system of tenths. They're not better or worse, they're just different. And so some people like metric, some people like imperial, it depends on their work that they're doing. And some people like dogs, some people like cats. But it would become an intellectual contagion if the cat lovers say, let's eradicate all dogs. Here's a little chart I drew out to help explain the concept. For the distance unit of inch on the top, you can see how it's nicely divided half into half into half again, into half into half into half, whereas the meter, the metric equivalent, is more cleanly divided into tenths, which is also fine in different applications, but not so nice for fractions. You like the way the imperial system divides right as opposed to the metric system which once you get into those fractions it makes decimals that are not so clean they kind of get exactly longer. They're weird. or look at the volumetric unit here's a gallon divided into half gallons pints cups gills on down to tablespoons and the liter is just tenth to tenth to tenth you see they're just different for the gallon it's nice that we can look at half a gallon, and then half of a half of a gallon, half of a half of a half of a gallon, half of a half of a half of a half of a gallon, and we can't do that with the liter without ending up with really long, nasty decimals. So why does it matter if the base units are optimally divisible by more factors than uh, a competing system? Imagine if you were a farmer or a soldier, or for whatever reason, you didn't have access to your smartphone, the power went out, you didn't have a calculator, you were out in the field and you had to make a calculation. You would be more dangerous if you could operate in a system that is easily imagined and that you can divide more of the quantities into whole numbers. It is much more practical for hands-on work. And that leads into reason number two, that I prefer the imperial system. It is very naturalistic. It is easy to imagine. Think about it. There are a dozen inches in a foot, just like there are a dozen eggs in a carton, just like there are 12 half steps in a musical octave, or 12 moon cycles in a year, or <laughs> a dozen hours in half a day. 
And just as the moon cycles are nicely halved into two fortnights or quartered into four weeks, a pint is nicely halved into two cups or quartered into four gills. Consider the other units within the imperial system. Most of them are easy to imagine. Think about the volumetric unit of cup, tablespoon, or teaspoon. The distance of hand, inch, and foot. The imperial system is an older system, and it harkens back to the earliest systems of measurement we have on record. Think about the ancient Hebrew volumetric unit of bath, or the distance unit of palm, or cubit. And these things are very, very easy to imagine and useful when we're operating and working with our hands in the field. The units apply to physical, tangible objects. You know, in talking with folks, I realize there is general misconceptions regarding the imperial standard system. I hear folks say that uh, the metric system is uniquely convenient because one liter is one kilogram in terms of the mass of water at the volume of one liter. But the imperial system is no different. A pint is a pound a mile around. So remember that one. Also, folks say that the pound mass is confusing. In the metric system, you just have the kilogram. It's simple. But the imperial system has both the pound mass and the slug. But recognize that's a feature. The slug is the base unit of mass, but the pound mass is a convenient mathematical trick so that your quantity of mass equals your quantity of force. And the third reason I want to cover today is that the imperial standard system is just simply practical where we live. The fact that more countries out there use the metric system is not necessarily justification that we should. Think about a country that speaks their own language. We would not argue that they should change their language and erase all of that rich history because other countries speak other languages. As an engineer running a, a consultancy, 95% of what I do here in the United States of America is done in the imperial standard system. It is simply what producers, farmers, and builders are used to. It's how our machinery that, that makes parts are, are tuned and calibrated. And, you know, we could say, well, we'll wipe them out and bring in new equipment, but it's not going to be so easy. We have machines operating just in my area from World War II these mills that make parts are ancient and, and we've gutted out the DC motors and replaced them with AC motors. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. All of our tools are calibrated for what do you call the imperial, the American system, the English system. So all of my tools read that. If you went to metrics, you either have to buy all new tooling that's calibrated in metrics or you would have to use conversions. Your dials, your hand dials, and everything, all your handles on the machines, you'll, they're all in thousands. You have to change the gearing and the drives on the lathes to be able to cut metric thread. Because you run this manual mill. Right. And so all the dials and controls are tuned and calibrated for the imperial exactly. standard system. Exactly, yes. So my two cents is as metric is pushed in the global media or in the schools, recognize when you get out into industry and you work with your hands with real machines it is in your best interest to be familiar with the standard imperial system